Chapter 8 A New Friend The morning came quickly, and Zeddy and Zadie were up before dawn. They dressed quickly and ate a small breakfast. Zeddy checked the new laws for the day, but fortunately the twenty new laws all had to do with appropriate use and disposal of plutonium. Zeddy's father had mentioned that plutonium was used to make nuclear power, so Zeddy assumed the new laws were a result of the radiation that was detected in the Nevada province a couple of days ago. Zadie, too, was relieved that they didn't have to contend with anything too demanding from the IG today. As promised, a small box was waiting for them by the front door. Opening the box was exciting, yet scary. Inside the box, there was a map with explicit directions on how to reach 777 Zorancher Lane in Livermore. Four unlimited tram passes for all of Emerasia lay on top of a stack of papers. Judy Zich must have had connections everywhere, because the box was filled with hundreds of different identification cards and papers for Zeddy, Zadie, Zane, and a man who must have been Professor Zachary Zenith. Zeddy and his mother realized that this journey was not going to be simple, and that it may be a long time before they return home. "'Are you ready for this, Zeddy? It's going to be a big adventure, I think,' Zadie asked her son. "'I'm ready, Mom. We have to do this to find Dad. Besides, I have a new friend I have to help get home, too. They're both counting on me,' Zeddy answered. "'A new friend? What do you mean?' Zadie asked suspiciously. "'Come and see,' Zeddy answered. Zeddy picked up his backpack and motioned for his mother to follow him. "'Zeddy, what are you talking about? Who is this new friend? Why are we going to the bathroom?' Zadie asked as she hurried after Zeddy into the bathroom. Zeddy shut the bathroom door and turned to look at his mother. He held his finger up to his mouth to indicate that she needed to be quiet. She wanted to ask him what was going on, but Zeddy waved his finger at her again requesting that she be quiet. Zadie crossed her arms over her chest and looked at Zeddy impatiently. She wasn't sure how she felt about this whole situation. Zeddy turned off the light and Zadie's temper was about to flare when she noticed that there was a strange glow coming from Zeddy's partially opened backpack. Smalley? Hi there. I want you to meet my mom. She's going on our journey with us, and I think it's important for you guys to meet before we leave. Do you mind coming out to meet her? Zeddy asked softly into the backpack. No, I don't mind at all. I would love to meet your mother. A little voice answered from inside the backpack. Zadie's mouth dropped open at the sound of the little voice in utter disbelief. She was shocked and a little horrified at what could possibly be glowing in that backpack and talking to her son. As she was about to reach out and grab Zeddy to run screaming down the hall, a most magical thing happened. A butterfly, well, maybe a butterfly, emerged from the backpack. It was the most amazing thing Zadie had ever seen. Its wings and body were invisible, yet not, and it gave off the most beautiful light that shimmered silver, gold, blue, and violet all at once. It fluttered up and out of the backpack and landed on her outstretched arm. Mom, this is Molly. He's a dark matter zutterfly from Zamira. He wants to go home, and I told him we would help him. Zmali, this is my mother Zadie, Zadie said, as Zadie stood mesmerized by the glowing creature on her arm. Hello, Zeddy's mother, Zadie, Zmali said in a kind little voice. Hello, Zmali, Zadie said in disbelief. The little bug's wings flittered and fluttered, and its glow was indescribable. Zadie could not believe her eyes, but she knew it was real. Mom, Zmali is from Zamira. He said that Dad brought him back in his pocket from Zamira, so that means Dad was there, but that doesn't mean he's there now. Maybe Nimue misunderstood, and Dad was there, but isn't any more. That may mean he is with this professor we're trying to find. Maybe we'll find him today, Zeddy said excitedly. You mean your father did go to this other world and brought Zmali back here? How could he do that? And why? asked Zadie in confusion. I don't know, but don't you think that might be a sign that Dad is okay, since he brought Zmali here? I hope we can return him, Zeddy answered. I hope that as well, Zmali said happily. Zadie stood there in disbelief. Her husband traveling to another planet, bringing back dark matter zutterflies in his pocket, disappearing. It all seemed so strange, but she knew Zane's desire to find the truth and find a way out of IG's control. Maybe this was part of his plan? She stood there in silence until she remembered they were standing in the bathroom in the dark. Why did we have to come in here to meet? Zadie asked curiously. I haven't figured out how to find Zamali in the light, Zadie answered. Until I do, we'll just have to find him in the dark. Zmali, can you see us in the light? Zadie asked the Zutterfly. Why, yes, I can. I didn't think of that. 
Even if you can't see me in the light, I will keep track of you, as Molly answered with a cheerful pink glow added to his glimmering. You must be happy, said Zeddy. You're turned pink, and now I don't have to worry about losing you. But just for the trip, do you mind riding in the backpack? I would hate for you to lose track of us on the tram. Not in the least. I feel much safer where I know you can find me. This world is a little scary to me. I would really prefer to ride in your cozy backpack. Thank you, answered Zmali. With that, Zmali flittered and fluttered up and then back down into the backpack. Bye, Zmali. See you in a bit, Zeddy whispered as he zipped up the bag. Zadie could not believe all that had transpired in the past twenty-four hours. Her husband had disappeared. Her neighbor was revealed as an ancient witch. Her son had discovered some kind of dark matter zutterfly, and their search for Professor Zachary Zenith might be the only way to set it all right. She could only hope that things got more settled rather than less. Otherwise, this was going to be a long journey that she wasn't at all sure she was ready to undertake. As she looked at Zeddy in the mirror beside her in the now-lit bathroom, Zadie realized that there was nothing she wouldn't do to find her husband Zane and reunite her family. She also realized that she loved Zeddy more than anything, and suddenly the boy from yesterday had been replaced by the budding young man of today. Zadie took a deep breath, and she decided once and for all that this trip would not end until her husband was home. Come on, Zeddy. It's time to find this Professor Zenith. The tram leaves in a little while, so we need to get going, Zadie smiled down at her son. Sure, Mum, Zeddy answered as he strapped on his backpack. The two gathered the duffel bags and oxygen tanks, and they packed a couple spare canisters of oxygen in a third duffel bag that had a change of clothes for Zane. There were some non-perishable foods and water bottles in the extra bag as well. Zeddy ran back to the bathroom and grabbed the first aid kit to add to the bag, just in case. Zadie stood waiting for him at the door. As the two opened the door and stepped out into the yellow-gray haze of mid-morning, Zeddy turned around to look at his house one last time. Somehow he knew it would be a while before he would return. The house alarm chirped, and Zeddy and Zadie started down the street toward the tram station. The sun glared around them, and as they walked along they seemed to disappear into its golden rays.